we need to talk about the emotional effects that happen after losing a baby. Because I think to know what to say or to do for that person, you first need to understand what it is they feel like and what they're going through. So let's start there. This may be a two part video, depends on how long it is. We shall see, but let's go there. Sometimes life's biggest storms give you the most beautiful rainbows. We are chasing rainbows. You ready, Mimi? Okay, let's say hello. Hi, welcome back to Chasing Rainbows. I'm Christina, and this is my little dog, Mimi. If you haven't been here before, I'm so glad you found the channel. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell before you leave, so that way you see other videos like this one and more videos to come. All right. So this is a hard subject for me, so I decided I'm going to hold and post my little baby doll, Brielle Hope, who is my reborn doll, which if you haven't seen her or heard her mentioned in one of my videos, go back to the very first one. That'll explain why I got her, and hearing more in this video will kind of explain. Anyways, and I've got my little Mimi here with me to give me some comfort too. Hi, Mimi. It's Mimi. So today, I want to talk to you about the emotional after effects of losing a baby because I think to know how to respond to somebody who just had a miscarriage or had a stillbirth or suffered a loss of a child that had just been born maybe maybe the baby died after a month or two months um, I was born per prematurely or what have you um, knowing how to respond to that person can be really hard and I've heard that from lots of people, like, I just don't know what to say, or I didn't know what to say, or maybe they're afraid to say the wrong things, and often the wrong things come out just because they don't know what to say. So I want to help you with that, but first we need to talk about not just knowing what to say or what to do, but I want you to put yourself in that person's shoes for a moment and try to understand how they feel and what it was like from their perspective because losing a baby is traumatic it is incredibly hard probably the hardest thing i've ever walked through in my life and i've done it three times now it's not just the loss of your child but it's the loss of the loss of your future with that child. It's the loss of all, all the dreams that you had. Um, maybe dreams that you had even before you knew you were pregnant with them. Um, you may have thought about how you would play in the nursery, or maybe you started planning the nursery, or um, you were in the middle of decorating it, or even doing things like looking up childcare. I know that was one of the things my husband and I were like, okay, we're, we're basically halfway through this pregnancy, so we just need to start planning for if we actually get to hold this baby, even though we had lost the two before. So we were talking about how that was going to work with me still working full time, what that looked like. Um, pricing out diapers and strollers and um, formula and all the things that come with a baby. And now you're just left empty. That's the biggest description. It's an overwhelming sen sense of emptiness. And I actually recently learned of something called empty arm syndrome. I didn't even know that was a thing where you just crave that feeling of holding a baby, which is, and it actually can be physical, like your arms can physically ache, um, which is why I was so desperate to find something, something to hold. So for, 
for years I had looked into like weighted teddy bears or anything with weight and I couldn't figure out why I was so desperate to feel weight, but that makes sense. I actually found something that I printed out. I found it on a website that talks about empty arm syndrome, and stillbirth, and miscarriage, and I'm going to link it down below. And anyways, I'm just going to quote a couple lines in here. It says, the impact of stillbirth and miscarriage on families can be long lasting and traumatic with symptoms that are sometimes similar to post-traumatic stress disorder. And like I said before, empty arm syndrome is where your arms are aching to hold a baby. I'm gonna hold on to this other, the other quote for just a minute, but I want you to think that, okay, maybe the person lost their baby at five weeks, six weeks, seven weeks, whatever, if it's in the first trimester, often a lot of people dismiss um, the grieving process. You're upset. Um, they just don't even understand why you feel so much overwhelming grief, why you're so upset. It makes sense to me because I've been through it. I've been through a loss in the first and second trimester now and I remember hearing somebody say something or reading something somewhere else that talks about often grief uh, like from an outside perspective like the length of time is based upon like people interpret that okay it shouldn't take as long for this person to grieve because the person was only pregnant for five weeks or six weeks, whatever you want to say. So it shouldn't, shouldn't last very long. What they're not taking into consideration is how long this baby may have been thought of, how long it may have been wanted, how long it may have been prayed for, and how many dreams were made for it for years who knows how long prior to that baby being born. And that dream died. Every hope that they had, every plan that they made in their head, whether shared or not shared, people start planning from the instant they see those two pink lines. You just do, you dream of it. You're so excited. You're planning how you're gonna tell people, how you're gonna keep it a secret how you're looking up everything you need to know about pregnancy and beyond. You're, you're not just thinking of the pregnancy part. You're thinking about all the things you want to come. And all of that is gone in an instant. And that's devastating. I think so often people assume that because they didn't meet their child, because they didn't hold their child, because they didn't build a relationship with them, that what is there to miss? Like, what is the attachment? And I want to read that other quote that I saved, which says, in decades past, the thinking was, if your child didn't live, how could you have attached to them? Now, what we understand about loss is that these parents will be thinking about their child for the rest of their lives. And to pretend it didn't happen is incredibly hurtful. This is often what people do though. Um, they either pretend it didn't happen, they ignore it, they just expect the person to move on. And I think some people think that if I don't talk about it and I ignore it, maybe the other person will just start to move on. Like they'll just catch up. Um, but that's not really how things work. And often the more someone feels ignored and the less that it's talked about or the less that they feel heard or listened to during that time, 
I think speaking from experience, the more you withdraw either from that part particular relationship or just withdraw from people in general, because you're just not sure how people are going to react, what they're going to say, what they're going to not say. Um, all of it just starts to become an overwhelming fear. And that's what caused me to distance myself from people. I stopped talking about it. I stopped sharing my feelings um, because I had my feelings hurt so many times by people that I thought were very close to me, family members, um, friends, counselors even. I genuinely do want to educate people because I think that's the problem. People get hurt because um, people just don't know what to do or what to say. And so they just blurt things out without thinking. Thanks for watching today's video. Before you leave, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell. Also, follow me over on Instagram at Chasing Rainbows Channel. That way you can see what I'm up to between videos.